Well, hello everyone. Hi. Hi. Welcome everyone to the Mayoral Candidate Forum presented by the Anchorage Arts Alliance. I am Teresa Pond, the Artistic Director of Cyrano's Theatre Company, and Cyrano's is honored to be hosting tonight's event. Anchorage is a unique community, one we were born into or arrived to. Anchorage sits upon sacred homelands of the Dena'ina of South Central Alaska, whose people have been stewards since time immemorial. In more recent years, our students' ethnic diversity tops national levels of culture and languages. We are Chichacos and Sourdoughs. We are ancient and innovative, and we tell stories through arts and culture. And tonight, we hope to meet new friends and deepen relationships amongst us all. Bit of housekeeping before we start. If you have a cell phone, if you do want to put it away, we are filming and uh, we will be sharing this, in, this event tonight in, in, you know, in a future recording. Uh, if you uh, had an emergency tonight, we have plenty of places to go. You can go out our north wall door, which would actually go to the snow. You can come around to the south side and take the ramp up to Primrose, or you could go out the way you came and you would actually get to go backstage where the actors live and out to our exit that way. But I think we will be in fine, fine form tonight to be right here. Uh, if you needed a bathroom, they're up on the main lobby and to the lower, if you have the need, the lower lobby. But uh, now, I think I would like to turn tonight's event over to our moderator, Executive Director of the Anchorage Concert Association, Mr. Jason Hodges. Thanks very much, Teresa. Thanks so much for hosting, too. Uh, you, you may not know this, but we are on the beautiful set of Clue, uh, which is sold out this weekend? Yes. It is sold out this weekend, so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, yes, good evening. I'm Jason Hodges, the Executive Director at the Anchorage Concert Association, acting as the MC and moderator tonight. And I want to extend my welcome uh, to the mayoral candidates and to you, the audience, as well. Thank you so much for being here. Now, this is what, like your 93rd forum that you've had this season? <laughs> Seems like every time I open 94, right? Seems like every time I open the paper, there's a new one. Well, really, thank you so much for being here uh, to share with us tonight. But also, thank you to the audience. Uh, you're the ones who make this also meaningful. Just like when we're putting on a, a show, a music show instead of a you know a talking show, uh, having you here is incredibly, incredibly meaningful because obviously this means a lot to you to be here to hear a little bit more about the candidate stand on arts and culture. Uh, the Anchorage Arts Alliance, who is hosting tonight's event, is an affiliated group of arts organizations from across Anchorage who began meeting in April of 2020, shortly after the start of the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, there was no leadership to pull the arts community together uh, to get us through that very unprecedented time. Collectively, we started meeting on Zoom and created shared values, which were about gathering and sharing information together, visibility for arts and culture, and advocacy for arts and culture. While many of us in the arts community, both organizations and individuals uh, still find ourselves in various stages of recovery, the Arts Alliance has brought and continues to bring stability to so many in the arts and culture community. Well, we do live in an amazing community. It's a night like tonight that really, I think, drives that home. We take pride in our out of doors and the natural beauty. From our long summer nights to our short winter days, we have tremendous opportunities to hike on trails, fish, ski, bike, ride, dine in restaurants, and see the hottest shows. We have a symphony orchestra, we have an opera company, and many, many theater and dance companies telling diverse stories. We have world-class museum and many fine art galleries. And there are over 100 languages spoken in our school district. There are dozens of festivals throughout the year celebrating the many communities and cultures that, Anchorage, that call home Anchorage. As we embark on our civic duty to vote for the leader for the next three years, it is our hope tonight to hear from these candidates as they share their love of and their hopes for their leadership of this amazing community. The candidates who are here tonight uh, that we invited to be with us uh, were candidates who met a, a threshold. They had at least 75 donors, $50,000 in contributions, and an official campaign website. And the questions for tonight's forum came from members of the Anchorage Arts Alliance and were also solicited online from members of the community. They were designed to spur discussion on different topics of arts policy, including arts in the economy, community identity, health and wellness, and education. 
The goals for this forum are to promote cross-sector connections from the arts to other areas of our community, share important data that will help candidates better understand the value of arts and culture, build relationships, and hopefully maybe define some future arts policy. Oh, and one more thing, we are here to have fun, right? That's what the arts and culture are about, about having fun. So let's make sure that happens as well. Uh, tonight's forum is being recorded for live radio broadcast. Thank you to Out North for, for doing that for us. And Perseverance Theater is video recording for rebroadcast at a later time. So like Teresa said, we ask you to be, please be respectful and silence your cell phones so that they don't go off during the forum. Uh, the candidates will be asked questions in turn, the order of opening and closing remarks, as well as the order in which the candidates will receive questions, was determined through random selection and overseen by the League of Women Voters of Anchorage, a very important function. Uh, all remarks have been, are going to have time limits. Opening and closing statements will be given one minute, and the answers to the questions will be given 90 seconds. Candidates have been asked not to go over their allotted time. And to help with this, we have our timekeepers, Denise Brown Chifluk and Pierre Derich, the executive director of the Alaska Youth Orchestras and a member of the Anchorage Symphony. So this is where the fun comes in. When their time is up, you're going to hear Pierre play softly on his cello. If the candidates continue speaking, he will play loudly to indicate that your time has fully elapsed. And we also ask that the candidates not interrupt each other during the Q&A. All right, Pierre, are you ready? Okay, so we have Denise down front. She's got a sign. When that sign goes up, you've got 10 seconds. When she turns the sign... <laughs> and if they keep talking, they're going to hear... All right, you may not hear John Williams from Jaws, but, uh, but Pierre will be having some fun over there in, in, the, in the band band pit. Uh, okay, so uh, tonight's order of candidates uh, will be Chris Tuck, Bill Pop, Suzanne LaFrance, and Mayor Bronson. So at this time, we invite each of the candidates to give us a 60-second introduction, and it can be about whatever you want, and we're going to start with Chris Tuck. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad everybody showed up tonight to hear us, who we are and what we're about, and thank you for the opportunity to share our heart. I, um, I was a graduate of Diamond High, Anchorage School District, product of that and I went to five years of Alaska Fine Arts Camp. I started off with in fifth grade, um, actually fourth grade playing the viola but I got kicked out of, uh, of orchestra class because I was goofing around too much and then went to uh, fifth grade playing clarinet and then uh, bassoon in eighth grade and then saxophone in tenth grade and then um, um, I still play the recorder. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, so, no, Alaska Fine Arts Camp, my mom always knew that if I wasn't doing music, I was getting in trouble. So music kept me uh, in tune, it uh, kept me in aligned, and uh, it kept me motivated. It made me take the classes I needed to take to graduate from high school, but it also did a lot for expanding my horizons and getting me to, to think. I mean, I'm really good at math, I think, as a result of music. <laughs> Well, hi, everybody. It's good to be here tonight. Um, class of 77, East Anchorage High School, quadruple honor thespian. Uh, UAA theater department for two years, including standing on stage for Lion in Winter as Richard. And then the villain in the melodrama uh, for uh, two years straight. I don't know if that was typecasting or what that was. Um, arts are a very important part of my life and who, who who I am today. I learned forensics at East Anchorage High School. I was part of the debate team. I was a state finalist in duet acting and uh, runner-up to no second place. And it's just, it's something that really means a lot to me. And I've tried to stay in touch with the arts uh, since I came back here to Anchorage. I was involved in the arts on the Kenai Peninsula when I lived down there for a while after my wife and I moved there in 1983. But it's, it's important, it's part of the fabric of our community, and it's made up by the many cultural threads of our community that makes that fabric. And I'm so pleased to be here tonight to converse with you. Thanks for having us here tonight. I'm Suzanne LaFrance, and I'm running for mayor. As I thought about running, I thought about two things. First, how do we restore our basic trust and competence to City Hall? And at the same time, how do we create a future for our entire community beyond that? 
I know we can do both. We can clear the snow from our streets and make sure those same streets are safe and welcoming, home to more housing and strong local businesses. It starts with good government, but we can't stop there and we don't want to stop there. We live in an amazing, diverse community with so much potential. My vision for Anchorage has three parts. First, restore competence and basic services to our community. Second, we need to make our streets and trails safe for everyone. And third, we need to make our entire community a better place to live, raise a family, go to school, start a business. I have 25 years of experience in the private sector, I served two terms on the assembly, and I know how our municipality works and I know how to make it work better. Thank you. Well, thanks to the league and thanks for Cyrano's for doing this. This is a great venue. Um, real quick, uh, after nine years of active duty military as a, uh, as a bomber pilot, I moved to Alaska after getting an airline job. The airline moved me up, up here with Northwest Airlines. And then um, I got into the Air Force Reserves at 11th Air Force as a war plans officer. And then I went to the Guard as a maintenance officer, Alaska Air National Guard as a maintenance officer and as a C-130 pilot. Uh, we've raised two kids here, Zach and Katie, 26 and 28 years old. My son's pilot for Alaska Airlines. My daughter is a PhD in biochemistry, microbiology at the University of UAMS uh, in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, they obviously got my wife's brains, uh, we can tell, and uh, we're very proud of them. Uh, we love this city. Uh, this is why I got into politics. And uh, we're looking forward to an opportunity of three more years to help move this city forward. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, candidates, for those introductions. Suzanne, we want to make sure your mic is working now. Yeah. Would you? Testing? All right. No. 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 Okay, that's what we got. There you go. Okay, so there better. we go. Excellent. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's start with the questions. We ask you again not to go over your allotted time. Excellent, Pierre. Nicely done. Um, and please also don't interrupt each other, which has not been a problem so far. Um, you're going to have 90 seconds for these responses. Uh, now, this question is sort of two of you answered the question. This, you already answered the next question, but we, we were anticipating that. Uh, what we really want to hear is what your personal connection is to arts and culture. Do you play something? Do you paint something? Do you attend? Do you support kids? What, what is it exactly you do? Or if you've already answered that question, um, you know, would you please expand on that even a bit more? Other volunteer work you might have done or other ways in which the arts are meaningful to you now? And uh, we'll start with, uh, with Mr. Pop on this one. So my family has a history in terms of my wife and I in music. I was in band until I got sucked into theater in my junior year. And my wife was a flautist. Our daughter was a flautist. Our son was a trombonist. Um, both of them were much more accomplished than I was and went on to honor band statewide and just truly has made a big difference in their lives in terms of how rounding them out as well-rounded members of the community. You know, on a personal level, I've been a nine-year member of the Anchorage Concert Association Board of Directors. That was a near and dear project to my heart to be a part of that in both an exciting time and some challenging times. And I'm a true believer in how the arts can truly influence our community <coughs> in ways that we just don't otherwise recognize until we experience it. Whether it's the visual arts, the performing arts, the audio arts, whatever it may be, we have to have a well-rounded art community in Anchorage, and I'm a big fan and a big supporter of that element of our community. It just, it's because we've got roots in it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead and go. Okay, thank you. So I'm a mom of three kids, and all three kids have gone through to are still in ASD schools and participated in the music program, specifically band. And so as, as I was reflecting on recent cultural experiences that I've had here, the last three events I've attended have been band related and have included uh, a jazz festival, a band festival, and then another music night at the different high schools for fundraising. And I have to say that the program that our children have access to, or at least did before things started to get cut and you know what's been going on in Juneau is just so vibrant and I've seen it firsthand how 
it has um, elevated my own children in ways that I, I wouldn't have imagined and how it really has brought passion to their lives. And so I feel very passionate about supporting these opportunities for young people. And I got to say, too, one of the best experiences I had was as a chaperone going to the pack, and there was some um, music program where the children were engaged. It literally got them out of their seats where they were hopping straight up and then hitting the chairs and you know, and just really loving it and learning and engaging with music in a way that I think brought depth and fun to their educational experience and help, I would assume, to make them even more so lifelong learners. Well, we raised our kids uh, mostly on music. My daughter was the more talented of the one as a pianist, uh, she did a great job. Of course, now that she moved away, this baby Grant sits there in the living room and, and doesn't do a whole lot. Our son doesn't live with us anymore. Um, the arts I prefer, I guess, are the visual, the performing arts, the more in acting. Um, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I, I, I started teaching myself screenwriting. So, uh, but then three years ago, I got a job that kind of shut that down. <laughs> so uh, no, no time for that, and I'm struggling to keep my final draft um, software up to date these days. So, um, but arts are important, and they've been important to, to, in, in human history for about 6,500 years. There's never been a successful society, a culture, uh, from Greece to Rome to, to Egypt uh, and Persia. Arts have always been important any suspicion that we can be successful as a society or as a culture without arts is, I think, is pure folly. And uh, I've supported it through the mayor's grants. Uh, I've given well over uh, $200,000 to the arts grants in the city. Uh, again, more in the performance areas, uh, the symphony, uh, the performance arts, uh, and, and that's just my interest, so that's just, just me. Uh, again, in that contribution to make our society better, more productive, and uh, happier. So uh, I'm proud to support that. So as I mentioned earlier, I played uh, sax, bassoon, and clarinet. And that's uh, reed instrument number three, typically, when you're in a pit orchestra. And so I played in pit orchestras for the chorus line for Oklahoma, and uh, for Fiddler on the Roof, and uh, one other one. Oh, the music man. How can I forget the music man? <laughs> And uh, so, no, I really enjoy playing in pit orchestras, even though you don't get a whole lot of recognition unless people lean over after the performers to see who's all down there. Um, but no, I enjoy it a lot. Uh, my daughter is now um, playing piano. She's uh, huge into dance as well. My son was clarinet and uh, went on to playing guitar. And, uh, but we all know what arts does for our community. It brings people together, it shares ideas, it expands our horizons, and really, it uplifts mankind. And I think about, uh, I'm getting really deep now, but Mozart, and when he was in Vienna from 1781 to 1791, how he really, his dad wanted him to be part of that national theater, the German national theater, to uplift the Germans at that time because the Austrians were the upper class and the Germans were the lower class. And I really do believe that that's what we can do with the arts. And it doesn't matter how much skill a person has, where they do have a responsibility in what their art does on society because it really does shape society. And so that's how I've kind of, in all my years of public service, is how I looked at myself and my decision making is, does this uplift mankind or is this actually hurt? So having that art background, having that culture, having that um, um, uh, background in my life has helped out with my decision making. Thank you. So we've invited a number of folks tonight to help ask the questions. And our next question comes uh, to us uh, from Susan Churchill, and she's the Vice President of Perseverance Theater Board of Directors. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> and thank you, candidates, for being here tonight. Um, we reside and work on the unceded Denina lands, which is a vital part of our community identity. How will your administration work with arts and culture, culture, work with arts and culture groups to amplify that identity? And we will start with Ms. LaFrance. Thank you. The diversity of culture and art and experiences in our community is, is such a strength. 
and something that we see as important uh, for quality of life, but also to tourists as well. And I think that the um, indigenous place naming project is a really great example of honoring Denaina tradition and culture and also enriching the experience for tourists and for folks who live here. As mayor, I will promote the kinds of projects like the place naming project, as well as partner with members of the art community and other organizations to ensure that the municipality is not a barrier to any kind of um, cultural expression and development in our community, but a partner and looking also for ways in which we can grow the pie of funding and seeking out opportunities in our community for programs that um, can also help advance and honor the Denina culture. Thank you. Great, well, <clears throat> cultural tourism, I think, is essential for our society, for our city to move forward. We've got to compete with places like Santa Fe and Juno, who, who, who do much better than us. Uh, that's why I've, uh, I've used uh, $25,000 of the mayor's community grants to create a feasibility study working, contracting with uh, um, artspace.org, which is a group that's a real estate development group to bring whatever you want, but in this case art, and, and turn it into commerce. Our, our tourists want this. Um, and we're working in coordination with Emily Edenshaw at the uh, Native Heritage Center to bring that art, hopefully, uh, to the Egan Center, because we've got to bring that cultural tourism to within walking distance of where our tourists are. The notion that they've got to get on a bus to go all the way out to the uh, Native Heritage Center to experience this uh, is problematic and always has been. That, that, that facility should have been downtown in the first place. So her idea is, Emily's idea is something about active COVID totem uh, carving, which takes about two years for totem, um, and in the Egan Center, and to bring out a lot of the art, there's federal, uh, there's federal statute changes which are compelling um, art to be returned to their native sources. That's creating actually a burden uh, on the Alaska Native Heritage Center. They don't have the space to store it, and that's why we can help them. This is a win-win-win. So the tourists get what we want, we get what we want, and certainly uh, the Native Heritage Center does as well. Anchorage is a mosaic of different cultures, different uh, histories, different beliefs, and uh, different aspirations. And, uh, but the one thing that we do need to do is recognize the lands that we're on. We do need to, um, because that's really what tourists coming up here to see, right? They want to know about Alaska. They want to have a little bit of history there. And so we got to take advantage of those opportunities where we can uh, um, have festivals, have parades, have uh, museums opened up and, uh, and displaying um, really the Denina people's uh, culture right here. I would like to make Anchorage a place where we celebrate multiple different cultures throughout the year. We have so many different languages spoken that was mentioned earlier. And it'd be nice to be able to partner with uh, cultures with one another. Um, so that really bringing people together. And um, um, so if we do that, then we have more ideas. We'll have uh, more dialogue going on. But you know what really disturbs me is door knocking and talking to someone who doesn't even know who their neighbors are. And they've been there for three years. So I see as our arts, as our cultures, and uh, this is an opportunity to bring people together. So just like we're the city of lights, also be known as the city of flowers. We'll also go one step further to become the city of cultures so we can uh, um, look at all the cultures, not just indigenous cultures. So Anchorage already has an amazing number of assets that focus on the indigenous cultures of both, uh, of both the Athabascan people as well as the, all the native peoples of Alaska. And we've mentioned several of them in this conversation. I think what we do have to do, though, is better connect people who are visiting our community, whether they are tourists or whether they're a worker thinking about moving here or a business thinking about investing here with those assets, and that's called wayfinding. And indigenous named wayfinding systems, in parallel with English language signage, is an important element of connecting in the day-to-day -day of our community, just out on our streets, out on our roads. 
where we can find things. I, I, I dare you, Google flat top, because, and think of it from the perspective of somebody who doesn't live here, and you wanna, you've been told that flat top's a great place to go. You Google flat top, you'll end up in a pizza joint on 6th Avenue, <laughs> because we don't do a great job of getting people connected to that. The same thing is true with heritage sites throughout Anchorage. And we need to be looking at how we better connect both our citizens and our visitors to our community to those kinds of major assets that really give our city's roots front and center coverage in the minds of people who currently don't know anything about it. And I think that that's a key element that is something that could be done very quickly and relatively inexpensively citywide. All right, thanks very much. Our next question asker is uh, Carrie Zawadi, and she's the executive director at Alaska Dance Theater. Thank you, Jason. We take great pride in our municipal supported arts facilities in downtown Anchorage. How would your administration support and encourage the development of artistic communities within different neighborhoods of Anchorage? Mayor Bronson, we'll start with you. Thank you. Well, supporting venues like this is important in supporting those, those organizations, those nonprofits that actually perform in places like this. Um, that, that's kind of important. Everything can't be at the PAC. As much as I like going to the PAC, and we saw Hamilton and, and uh, come from away, and I think yesterday we secured our tickets to Aladdin, I think. Uh, as great as venue as that is, um, it, it, we've got to spread this out a little bit. Um, the um, mural tour in Mountain View is quite impressive if you haven't done that yet, and that is art. It certainly is. And uh, I, I, I really do think that we need to spread out this this wealth, this great wealth that we have, especially in the cultural art. So uh, I, I think we need to promote that, and I'm through the arts grants again. Uh, we do that as much as we can. Yeah, I, I like little tiny venues like this right here because this is where you get intimate with the performers. Um, I got a chance to see uh, Blind Date. I brought my mom here to see Blind Date, the musical. And I uh, also uh, came here to see uh, Tartuffe recently. Well, actually, that was back in December. But uh, as the mayor said, spreading it out, making sure that we have funding there. Um, in 2015, 2016, when I was minority leader, I was the chief negotiator over the budget because of the way our constitutional budget reserve works. So it put me in the spotlight of making sure that we were fighting for things that our community really wanted. And one of them was the Alaska Council of the Arts. I think back then it was uh, $800,000 that we were trying to secure, amongst the other things that we're, we were doing. Um, and so we also got to make sure that our high schools have the resources there. We have some great theaters there. We have some great performances. And uh, we just got to make sure that, uh, that, uh, that we attend those to show our support, but also that uh, our schools have the resources. When the school budgets dry up, the arts dry up, the trades dry up, all those things um, um, that makes education really enriching um, are no longer there. So uh, that's one way that we need to make sure that uh, we're, we're helping the arts is just making sure we're starting earlier with our children. So we're sitting in an example of what could be taking place across our city in terms of surplus facilities. This used to be a municipal library, and now it's a performance space. And we have existing performance facilities across the city that are, I believe, being used fully like they used to be back in the 70s when I was in the theater program at East Anchorage High School, and that's our high school stages. I'd love to have a conversation with the school district and see what we could do to facilitate more performing opportunities as demand hopefully increases and we can encourage that. I think also in terms of the visual arts, we need to be having conversations with our different neighborhoods and our different cultural partners in the community about needs that they would like to see met in terms of art installations within neighborhoods to improve the quality of life and quality of place across our city. When you start to celebrate the arts out on our streets and in our schools and in our old facilities that are maybe not getting the use that they need to be getting, we start to build a much better quality of place. And that starts to help turn the tide of people moving away from our city, our youth moving away from our city, and helps to attract needed working age adults and families to our community, to where we can turn around this downward direction that our city is headed in right now and get it back on course to a bright and brilliant future that it deserves and that we all want. Uh, 
You know, one of the themes that I keep hearing over and over on the campaign trail when I talk to people is this deep desire for beauty and pride in our place and and in our community, and also for connection. And I think that's something that pertains not to one place in our community, but all over, and that art has provides such opportunity for creativity and connection and innovation. What does that look like in the different communities throughout our larger municipality? You know, and I think a lot of folks have specific ideas when you talk to them and visions for their community and what they want to see, whether that's more live music in a particular area or visual arts or murals. Um, I know like the, the mural downtown near City Hall by Crystal Whirl Um, I worked near there for a little while and got to enjoy just how that brightened up and created such an uplift. And I think that um, there's potential to do that throughout our community. And I will be a mayor who's open to looking at those possibilities and hearing from all of you what those ideas are and how the municipality can be a partner in pursuing funding and making that happen. Because at the end of of the day, it is about being a strong, connected community and being a place where people want to live and art has a huge role to play in that. Next, I'd like to invite Matt Fernandez, the executive director of the Anchorage Community Theater to ask the next question. Uh, How can the mayor deploy the resources of the municipality to make our municipal arts and culture facilities and community arts events more accessible to underserved communities? Mr. Tuck, could you begin that? Yes, um, and I think it comes back to um, uh, making sure that uh, we have the grants available and that uh, if some, of, some of the missions could be subsidized in certain areas, but it's also going back to one of the questions of bringing it into um, more areas of uh, acreage rather than just downtown. And so if we can bring the art to these communities, hopefully we'll see more participation and, uh, and, and more activity and more exposure for, for people. So um, one of the key th- Though the key things for supporting the arts is really having a strong economy. You've got to have a strong economy because uh, we have a lot of competing demands right now on the Anchorage budget, and uh, um, the economy supports the arts. At the same time, arts supports the economy. And so we got to figure out a way of getting our budget under control so that we have some disposable income that we can then um, have more participation as, as our economy grows. Well, when we're talking about underserved populations, 90% of the time the problem is is we don't ask them to join us. We don't invite them. We don't connect them to the opportunities that are available. And then we don't necessarily support them as well as we probably could. I'd love to see a grant writing office within the mayor's eighth floor that is focused on writing grants for key city needs, infrastructure, police and fire, et cetera, and, but is also staffed up in a way that allows it to partner with the private sector, nonprofits, and underserved communities to seek out funding that we can bring into play that allows us to bring forward more opportunities for inclusiveness in our community when it comes to the multitude of different cultures that are represented in our community and different economic thresholds that people are living under. Um, you know, the underserved, the, under, the uh, underemployed, do have challenges in being involved in the arts because they are very much focused on some very basic things, which is where am I going to live and what am I going to eat and how am I going to take care of my kids? And we've got to find ways to bring some bright spots into those lives too and to invite them in to be part of the cultural celebrations and the cultural activities that we are having in our community. You know, I think it starts with, I I believe strongly, it starts with the basics, the municipality providing those core services that folks rely on. And we know that a lot of people don't feel safe going, for example, downtown and in, in parts of Anchorage. So ensuring that our streets and trails are safe is a key piece. 
I also believe that um, until we get those basics right, the municipality can't fully be a partner in pursuing grants and funding opportunities and doing some of these other projects that really enrich our community. And I also want to say too that schools, again, you know, mom of three have seen firsthand the benefits those arts programs provide to students. I mean, that is a wonderful way to connect children throughout the municipality, no matter where they live, you know, to have an opportunity to go to the PAC, to have an opportunity to um, play an instrument or um, explore visual arts. And so I'll be a mayor who advocates for our public schools because I believe they're essential, not just for ensuring that our kids know the, the basics. I believe art is part of that and essential for the full development of a, a, a person, a human being. And so um, funding our schools, ensuring that the municipality has those basics and is in a position to advocate and pursue funding for other programs is important. Thanks. Well, certainly we can do better in the grant writing because grant <coughs> Grants are important, especially state and federal grants are important to us, but our, 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 our grant writing office, which is a contract office, I think does a good job. And through my mayor's grants program, uh, we don't need a grants office or, or workers for that. We, my, me and my staff, we just do that. And we, I think we've done a good job of that, especially in the, in the arts the last two budget cycles. Uh, but there are mundane things, more mundane things that are essential to keeping things going. Um, during Come From Away, we had an elevator, actually two elevator failures, a freight and a passenger elevator in the pack that failed. And that we were well deep into our budget process at the time. And that came in at a, to the tune of about $1.8 million. And so we had to work with the assembly real quick uh, to turn that around and get that back into the, get that into the budget because we had, during those performances, we had the upper floors that, quite frankly, we couldn't, we couldn't get people to uh, that were in, in ADA sta status. So it was an ADA compliance issue. Uh, does it sound exciting, uh, fixing elevators? No, it isn't. Uh, but it's essential to make sure everyone can access those performances that we're working so hard now to bring to the city. And, uh, and, and our Broadway series, I think, is very successful. I, again, my performance art is kind of my focus, and I was real ha happy to help out with that. Next up is Jay Burns, the treasurer of the Cyrano's board. Thank you. Safety is a growing concern in Anchorage. This impacts artists and the arts sector because it makes residents hesitant to attend public events, especially in downtown Anchorage. What strategies could be implemented to increase safety in our community? Mr. Pop, you may start. So for 16 and a half years while I was at AEDC, I was also an advisor and member of the board of directors of the Anchorage Downtown Partnership. And one of the things that we've been advocating for, for years, was increased police presence on the streets in downtown Anchorage. We finally got it, it's partial. We don't have it at the time of day that I think it needs to be, which is round the clock, but it is, it is at least a step forward. But that's just a small step. I think we need to be a stronger partner with the Anchorage Downtown Partnership as eyes and ears in terms of what's going on in our streets downtown. Because right now, we only have less than 1,000 people living downtown 20, you know, as, as their residents. And our downtown, compared to other cities, should be closer to five to 10,000 people living downtown. When you have a resident population like that, you've got a lot of eyes and ears that are reporting things like bad behavior. And then we've got to deal with the police department staffing issues. We are down about 50 or so badged officers and several dozen support staff, and that is a problem. Uh, that stretches staff into overtime. That stress, stretches staff into burnout mode if you're not careful. And we need not only our budgeted positions filled, but we also need to start talking about whether or not we want to expand our police presence and our fire presence in Anchorage. Are we happy with where we're at with our public safety services? And what do we need to do to meet your expectations as members of the community? Oh. 
Public safety is the most important job of our municipal government. And it means we need to get out of crisis mode when it comes to homelessness. We've got to have a plan for shelter and a way for folks to access services so they have that elevator or ladder out of homelessness. It means we also need to staff up our public safety departments, including filling the approximately 50 vacancies of sworn officers. It means we need to invest in the mobile intervention team and mobile crisis team so that there is a response for folks who um, are having a mental crisis that isn't simply a police response, a response that can help them connect with services and get, get help that's needed. Um, it also means ensuring that the municipality is working with the state and other agencies to connect folks with mental health supports and other kinds of services. It means clearing the snow from this, the streets as well. And um, I will be a mayor who advocates for public safety and ensures that um, there is a partnership, not just you know between the municipality and the police and the other public safety departments, but with the community as well. Because right now we've got folks who are put in positions, whether they're business owners or, or residents, who are having to provide those responses without the support that's needed. Thank you. So we're 46 police officers short. 40, uh, three of those uh, are supervisory uh, positions. Normally, we, we used to get seven or 800 police officers apply for a class. And, if we can get 50 to apply for a class these days, it's pretty miraculous. Uh, a lot of that, in fact, a great deal of that, of that demotivation is due to the defund the police movement that's been sweeping the country. That, that's a big demotivator, and we're struggling uh, hard. In fact, I just gave the, uh, the police department the largest pay increase in the history of this city to retain and recruit new police officers. That's essential. The other thing I did was two months ago was uh, put on full-time, daytime, full-time, uh, foot patrol and we've got we're getting great results from that and the downtown business leaders are very happy with this but at the end of the day we're talking about homelessness and Suzanne is right we do need more shelter space we don't have enough on June 1st approximately 874 people are going to hit the streets of Anchorage because they have no shelter because through a confluence of problems contracts expiring with various hotels 874 people versus the 250 today are going to hit the streets, and that's because we don't have shelter. I came in office with a shelter plan of 1,000 people at uh, Elmore and Tudor, 1,000, because we knew this, this map. And after it was voted for, it was voted uh, against by too many assembly members in the middle of a concrete pour, by the way, and that killed that project. So June 1st, things are going to happen, and, and it's not good. Yeah, public safety is going to be number one. We look at downtown Anchorage. I mean, just the Ferrandi over this last weekend and the weekend before that, um, setting up early in the morning. Um, I can't believe how much homeless that we still have, even it's cold weather and we have shelters that they can go to. And, um, um, you know, we can't even keep coffee shops open up downtown right now. And retail is being affected. Our, uh, you know, so we got to get a little bit tougher on crime. We have no more uh, retail theft. No more public intoxication and uh, drug use. And uh, once you pick somebody up and get them in custody, then you can get them services that they need. One of the things that we're missing here in Anchorage, we have all the components, but one of the things that we're missing is drug and alcohol rehabilitation centers. Because when you, when, uh, you pick somebody up, they're in the back of a cop car or they're in an ambulance, or they go to their family and say, I need help. You have a small window of opportunity of getting them help. If you don't get them help right then and there, they're going to be jonesing for the next fix. They're going to commit whatever crimes. They're going to do whatever it takes to get their next fix. And so we also need to get tough on the drug dealers, on the fentanyl, meth, uh, heroin, even uh, prescription drugs. We've got to get tough on that because that's what's causing a lot of people to go homeless in the, in the first place. It never made sense to me why somebody would lace marijuana with fentanyl. Well, once you get them hooked on fentanyl, you can drain their entire resources, their family's resources, you can get everything from them, and next thing they're on the street. And so there's more that we can do in that area that's more effective. We spent $160 million over the last three years, and what do we have? A larger growing population of the homeless.
Next up is Katie Allison. She's a choreographer with Momentum Dance Collective and a media manager at a local marketing firm. And she has a very special person with her. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 2021 publication supported by the National Endowment for the Arts states place-based arts and cultural practices grow social cohesion for community well-being. We live in a polarized, in polarized times. How do you see arts and culture reducing polarization and promoting a healthier and more connected anchorage? Ms. LaFrance, you can begin. Thank you. Um, you know, I think about that a lot as I talk to folks and, you know, hear this desire to connect and work together in a, in a productive way, yet we know that we live in a polarized time and that's, that's been very difficult. And so I appreciate the opportunity that art offers to help all of us um, understand and experience different perspectives to enter that space of potentially um, understanding someone better and seeing them more as a human being and as a neighbor. Um, I also think of the ways in which uh, art can help, and, and we've seen that, for example, with individuals who are experiencing homelessness, who um, experience dehumanization, and, and how reconnecting with themselves is a key piece to healing and so important for being able to also reconnect with community. And so I see tremendous potential for art to bring us together after, you know, we've lived through some pretty tough times. And um, to come together to explore our commonality, our shared identity, um, where, you know, where do we go from here? And so I'm really excited about those opportunities in our community. And I think that um, we need to really make some effort in that area because I hear more and more there's such a deep desire for that positive connection. Throughout history, there's things that brought us together, philosophy, uh, religion, faith that comes with religion. And as I mentioned, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes ago, is, it's art. Uh, we, art brings us together, whether it's performance art or or, or painting or writing or whatever. Those things breathe, bring us together and coming together in venues like this or venues like the pack for a play. Um, we can be from all political spectrums. Uh, Suzanne and I could go to the same play, sit together and have a blast and, and enjoy the play and then, and then back to business. Uh, that's the nature of human nature. Uh, I, I think it's a good thing. I enjoy going to the pack. Again, that's kind of my preferred uh, type of art, but the notion that again that we we shouldn't or or can't come together to focus on something, whether it's food, which can be an art form, or coffee, or, or performance art, uh, that we can come to or can't come together over something like that, uh, that doesn't speak well of us. And I think here in Anchorage, in this culture, in this great city of ours, which Bill has said many many times over the years. We've got great potential. I, I'm not a down in the mouth on this. We've got challenges together. We'll meet them together uh, and, and we'll, we'll win. We, we really will. But uh, art does bring us together. And if we're not pulling on the same end of the rope on some of these things, uh, we're in big trouble. And I'm, I'm very positive. Well, I think that uh, people are getting stuck on their computers, the TV, and their portable devices to where they're just being fed the biases that, they've, uh, that they're prone to. And we know that. We know that social media is dividing this nation. There's no more gray area in between. It's either this or that. And uh, as was already uh, discussed, you know, art does bring people together. You know, we clap together, we cry together, we laugh together, we tap our feet together. You know, we uh, uh, nod our heads up and down together, and, and that's, uh, that's how we build communities, is bringing people together in one form or another. It's also important that we have a municipal government that people can have faith in, and that's what I want to do. I want to restore faith in gov municipal government once again, because when people are, are, are dismissed or cut off or not able to express themselves completely, then we, you know, what kind of democracy are we having? And we have so much apathy right now. I mean, our last municipal election, it was such a low voter turnout in spite of it being an all-ballot election. 
So we got to find ways to bring people together. We got to have active dialogue. We've got to have, um, um, you know, active listening and productive dialogue to, to, to really share ideas. And I think the best way to do that is uh, have more festivals, have more parades, have more opportunities for, for people to come together and nod and clap and cry together. So one of the chief functions of a mayor is to be cheerleader in, in, in chief for a city on any number of things, whether it is the future, whether it is the quality that we have together, whether it is cheerleader to get us through tough times. That's what the mayor is supposed to be doing more often as not, as opposed to making big decisions. Big decisions are part of the job too. For me, arts are a shared experience. You know, we, we find these opportunities to come together, whether they are in the performing arts, the visual arts, we, we share the experience together. And the mayor should be out there front and center, sharing that experience with as many parts of the community as they possibly can. That means uh, you don't have much of a private life. You don't have much of time off. You're out there doing things to make sure that the community is connecting because the mayor is the bridge to connections in our community and a bridge past some of the turbulence that we have in our society and in our, in our country in, in these difficult times. And that's the kind of mayor that I wanna bring forward in, if I am elected mayor, is the fact that you're gonna see me everywhere. And I am going to be there being a positive face in the room, no matter how tough the situation is. I'm gonna be a positive contributor to the community and I'm gonna be your cheerleader in chief. <laughs> All right, up next is Lewis Ulmer. He is the current chair of the Anchorage Concert Association Board of Directors. Um, in addition to our stunning views and rich outdoor offerings, Anchorage has a vibrant arts environment which bolsters its attractiveness to future residents and strengthens Anchorage's workforce. However, the arts and culture community is broadly underutilized in economic development, tourism, and community ad identity. What specific strategies would your ad administration undertake to advocate for, invest in, and prioritize the growth and stability of the creative sector? Mayor Branson? Well, we've talked about it a few times here, uh, making downtown, which is a cultural center of our city, whether we like it or not, um, it is. If you don't have a vibrant, functioning, safe downtown, you're just a collection of neighborhoods. That's not what we want. We, we want, there's something about coming together in a concentrated place, which is a downtown. And we're limited somewhat in that because of our homeless issue. And so you understand, uh, I've heard people from the right and the left attack me, uh, just go down and arrest everybody. Or uh, I've, I've heard all the extreme answers, put them on a boat in the inlet or throw them on fire. It, it doesn't work that way. There, there was a court decision in 2017 called Martin versus Boise. It prohibits us from enforcing our municipal law until we have enough shelter space. It's precisely why I came into office and day one and presented a shelter that had a thousand beds in it. Guess what? In a couple months, we're gonna have almost a thousand people hit the streets. Had we had that shelter when I came into office, all of these conversations over the last two and a half years about homeless, we wouldn't have had that. You have to, by by law, you have, by Ninth Circuit Court decision, you have to have a place to put these people before you can just sweep them off the street. Like it or not, that's, that's the world we live in, and that's why I filed an amicus brief with the Supreme Court here a few months ago to get federal Supreme Court relief from Martin versus Boise. We're pushing all the buttons we can, but we're kind of out of buttons. Dang, I got celloed again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, we have opportunities to grow our economy, but at the same time, make sure the arts grow along with it. And when we grow an economy, it's not just for the few, it's for everyone. As we expand the arts, we want to make sure it's not for the few, it's for everyone as well. But when we look at uh, um, our last summer, and you look at downtown, and I was at the railroad depot, when people, people were getting off, the train was late for some reason. People were getting off the train. They're looking up at the top of the 3rd Avenue like, man, what is going on up there? And it was hard to explain what was happening. And people were shocked that uh, 
Um, Alaska was blessed with so many um, natural resources and, and so many talented people that why in the world do we have such a large homeless population? And uh, one of the things I would like to do is I would like to, I mean, nothing that doesn't make sense to me is that we have free libraries. Why don't we have free museums? And so for the off season or during school season, if you have a library card, I think you should get free admission to the museum downtown because uh, that's an opportunity for people to, that are here residents to also the disadvantage be able to get into um, seeing what we all have to offer, because really the arts shouldn't be just for the privileged, it should be for everyone. And just like in a growing economy, it shouldn't be just for the privileged, it should be for everyone. So getting to the nut of the question, which is how do we use and incorporate arts and culture into our efforts to grow our economy? First of all, you are an important part of the economy already you generate significant economic activity in our community in any number of ways. And I've recognized that for over 16 years as head of Anchorage Economic Development Corporation. But the second thing is, is that this is a key asset for us to market our city. We have amazing, amazing cultural assets here that should be incorporated into a comprehensive marketing strategy that brings together the municipal government with the private sector who is desperate for workers. Two times as many jobs being posted in the Anchorage and Matsu area as there are available bodies to fill jobs. Set aside the issue of skills. We are in a very challenging downward trend in terms of working age adults in our community. And arts and culture are a key aspect in attracting young professionals, young workers of all disciplines, even young workers who are just basically going to come here and drive the bulldozer or you know, push the shovel because they have an interest in what kind of culture and arts we offer that meet their expectations. And this is the opportunity that we have to use arts and culture as a key asset for building our city of the future. And that's going to be what I'm going to be working on as mayor to incorporate that in a significant nationwide marketing strategy in targeted markets to get people to move here. And thank you for what you already contribute, as Bill noted, to our economy. I think we have an opportunity to take it to the next level. I mean, as far as our identity as a community and what that means in the way that we can attract visitors here, but also people to live here. Um, my daughter, who's 17, she likes to say, Mom, we need a new vibe. And, um, and what she means by that, too, besides, OK, more concerts, more um, you know, speakers that she likes and all that, is a livable community and a place that has positive energy and really has, um, an af well, an affordability, that's certainly a component to it, but really a place um, where young people feel like they are reflected in who we are. And I think like art, we have such an opportunity to explore that and develop that as we look at, you know, who, who are we going to be in this next part of our growth? I know um, folks often say Anchorage is a teenager right now, right? And what are we going to do with that to um, go to that next level so that we can not just attract people here to visit, but to stay and to see a future here for themselves. Thank you. All right, our next question comes from Fiona Worcester. Uh, she is a local ASD language arts teacher and performing artist. Thank you. Um, the arts, including visual art, music, dance, and theater, prepare students for success in school, work, and life. Whether a young person is pursuing the arts as a career or not, the arts can support student engagement, improve school culture, support literacy, and bolster problem-solving ability. These are highly prized skills and capacities in the 21st century workforce. How can the mayor partner with arts education efforts to prioritize the advantages arts education can provide? Mr. Tuck, you'll answer first. Well, promoting our base student allocation, increase the base student allocation, making sure that we have resources at our schools for um, the arts in education. And, uh, you know, we have STEAM, right? Um, we have science technologies. Um, 
engineering, uh, arts, and then of course mathematics. And uh, now the stream, I think the R either stands for research or for reading, depending on which, uh, which uh, R you want to use on that. And why? Because that's how you drive an economy. It does go hand in hand. It goes together. You want engineers that are creative. You want uh, um, um, artists to be good mathematicians and, and, and vice versa. They all go hand in hand. I mean, if you look at, I mean, Leonardo da Vinci said that you truly don't understand art unless you understand mathematics. Art can be very mathematical. Look at the golden um, proportion, you know, of just that in itself. Look at uh, our stringed instruments. Look at how our stringed instruments, the registration of each string is, is, is around the human singing voice. And as I said earlier, you know, we use art to uplift mankind, and, uh, and that's why it's so important. And so education and arts, we got to make sure that we advocate for, for, um, um, for those programs in our schools. I was very, I, was, I benefited from having art, I mean, sorry, music in fourth and fifth grade. I mean, do we have music today for fourth and fifth graders? I don't think we do. I think we have to wait till they're in sixth grade before we can begin them in their musical careers. <laughs> I was kind of wondering what kind of music he'd play for me. <laughs> I'm still hoping for the Jaws theme. I might run long just to get it. <laughs> um, you know, cheerleader in chief. The mayor has a responsibility to be out there absolutely advocating for a liberal, or art, liberal arts element in our school system. The mayor doesn't get to tell the school district what to do, but the mayor can definitely advocate for things that he thinks are good ideas for the school district and a rally community support around that. But fundamentally, you've got to be able to pay for it, and that comes down to whether or not the state is a reliable partner in funding education. Jury's out on that. We're waiting to see what happens. As mayor, if I were mayor right now, I'd be a very loud voice in Juneau talking about the need to get our funding up to snuff so that our schools can continue to offer the programming that they have and, gosh, expand the programming that we're offering instead of just settling for what we already have. We have stripped down our schools in so many ways since I was in high school in the 1970s. It was stunning, the school district that we had in the 70s. It was one of the top school districts in the country. What happened? When did schools become a second thought in terms of budgeting and purpose? I'm just, I'm just flummoxed by that mindset. And I'm going to be an advocate for strong funding for our schools, and I'm definitely going to be a cheerleader for a broad-based educational opportunity in our school system and in our universities. You know, being here tonight has brought back those uh, memories in our house of when we had a clarinet, a saxophone, and an oboe, sometimes all practicing at once. Um, and it was, frankly, beautiful, you know, to see the kids have that opportunity through their schools. and. Um, I've since learned that that program where kids, you know, start in sixth grade and um, have that support to be able to have access to an instrument has been cut back and doesn't exist. And that's a darn shame. As I said earlier, um, as mayor, I will be a champion and an advocate for education, for our schools, and for a full rounded education, and so that children have access to the arts and get to explore and develop themselves. We've got to inflation-proof the base student allocation. We've got to forward fund it. Our educators need to be able to retire with dignity. If we don't have good schools, we do not keep people here. We do not attract families, and we lose educators and their families. And that is a huge issue we're facing here, not just for Anchorage, but our entire state. So I will be a stalwart champion of our schools, and um, I, will, I am immensely grateful for those days when we had the three reed instruments going because it was a reminder to me, too, of that wonderful access to the arts and how they enrich, have enriched my kids' lives. <laughs> So I don't get y'all to wave that thing at 10 seconds, please. <laughs> um, uh, our governor is, is working hard to find, you, you can see in his budget proposal for public education, he's trying to pay teachers more. In Scandinavia, 
teachers are some of the highest paid people. Elementary school teachers are some of the highest paid people in society, and it should be that way. I spend a lot of time in elementary schools throughout the city. I see fantastic administrators, fantastic school teachers doing the best that they can. But Bill is exactly right. In 19, I, be, I believe it was 74, we were the fourth best state in the country for education. We're 49 now, and we're one of the most expensive. I think we're approaching 26 or $28,000 per year per student in the Anchorage School District. Within the, our stacking within the state is in the middle of that. I believe, I think, Wrangell is, is the number one in, in the state. In fourth grade reading and math, we're number 49. That's critical. We not only need to pay our teachers more, we also need to allow them to teach and have a lot more freedom and not teach by program. Programmatic means that's what they tell me. They want the freedom to teach. The other thing is, is that in, 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 in any society, or especially in our city, we need the, the engineers, we need the plumbers, we need everything else like that. But unless we're gonna wind up like, uh, 1984, a bunch of gray people walking around. Uh, we also need the artists, and we need, need them desperately. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I've got good news and bad news. Uh, we're, we're running like ahead of schedule right now, so that's the good news. The bad news is you get a bonus question as a result of that. So, uh, so uh, according to Mis Municipal Code, the Anchorage Arts Advisory Commission exists in part to promote public and private cooperation in support of the arts. As mayor, how will you empower this commission to fulfill this responsibility? Mr. Pop, we'll begin with you. It's gonna be a conversation between myself and the arts community as to how the commission can do a better job. And it's going to be a conversation with the broader community we need to always reassess how we've been doing things at regular intervals, just to make sure that we're not missing an opportunity. And I think that that's where, we, where the rubber hits the road on this. We have to have a meaningful conversation about whether or not the way the Arts Commission is currently designed is working best for the community that it is serving. <laughs> You know, we are so fortunate to live in a community where so many people are willing and happy to give their time and talent and energy. And the Arts Advisory Commission is one of many commissions within the municipality where folks are happy to do that. And I know that um, there have been some challenges with um, the uh, commission being fully staffed and you know that is a certainly a conversation with the existing commissioners and with members of the art community as to you know how can we support this commission and ensure that the folks who are on it you know represent as they have done our the diversity in our in our municipality so um, to any of you who may be serving or serve in that commission thank you for um, contributing to our community in this way and as mayor I look forward to working with you to ensure that um, you have the support you need and that we continue to reach out and pull in folks to serve on that important commission. Well, last week the uh, Mayor's Art Commission gave their recommendations to us, to my team, for their recommendations on how through the Mayor's Art Grants program uh, is funded. Uh, it'll look very similar to last year. Some folks in here are gonna do, I think, pretty well uh, again. Uh, that's how I can contribute, that's how the mayor can contribute, is, is to give the money to the experts who know how best to spend it. And uh, I think we're having a uh, press conference on that, on that, we're gonna have everyone in, all the awardees at one shot, and I, I believe that's this week. Um, I don't know, I was just told about that today, so I just said have a press conference. So uh, I think that's important. We need to spend, uh, we need to put our money where our mouth is, where our beliefs are, uh, again, um, the concert association, symphony, those, those things are gonna do well again this year under my administration because I believe in those things. It's art, it's creative, and it's good for all of us. Yeah, these are all very good answers. You know, this is kind of bringing it all together. Um, we just gotta make sure that we have community leaders involved as well. Whether they're on the council or not, making sure that their voices are being heard 
and that uh, their communities are also being um, exposed and represented in some way. Uh, you know, as I was saying earlier, it's basically making sure our arts is, is there for everybody. As arts grow, um, everybody has the opportunity to that and making sure that through our arts that our communities are being served um, better each time. All right, this is our final question for tonight. It comes from Megan Bladow. She is the marketing director of TBA Theater. All right, we're going to take a deep breath here. Right. In the face of numerous studies that provide overwhelming data which show arts and culture having significant positive impacts on economies, education and test scores, social issues, and community health and well-being, arts and culture groups still struggle to have a voice and to prove their importance in a healthy, thriving community. Please share how you value art and how you will commit to amplifying and resourcing our arts and culture in Anchorage. Oh, we're starting with Ms. LaFrance. Please. This is an area that I think is really exciting, whether it's um, helping folks heal and connect with each other, whether it's um, promo promoting and advancing our economy, or even dealing with complex issues like climate change. I believe that art can play such a critical role in helping our community move forward. Um, I look at the um, projects throughout our community like the murals and I think of the the seed lab and you know what that has done to promote um, community and to also advance art in our um, in our community as well as looking at some of the really specific things like the warming strips sorry I'm thinking about all of these different ways in which um, you know we get to experience and enjoy art and I realized the question was how will you advance it as mayor I'll work closely with all of you <laughs> for one and I'll be a mayor with an open door who invites different members of the community in I want to hear your ideas I want to partner I want to ensure that the municipality is an asset in helping us grow in advance and achieve these positive ends, especially with art. And um, I'm excited about that opportunity and thank you so much. Again, my focus has always been uh, more on the performance art. Uh, and, and, and it comes down to this, especially in the, in, the, in the arena of young men, sometimes without a father figure in the homes like this, that you can see it in them. They, they lack that self-confidence that you need to be successful in life. And what I've seen is on stage, you know, if you can teach a kid to act and give him the confidence, boy or girl, give him the confidence to stand up and, and, and in front of people and express themselves, um, uh, I'm just telling you, the, the self-confidence that they get out of that, it impacts their entire life for the rest of the life. And I, th I think of the one person that we all know of, Robin Williams, one of the most gregarious, talented people, I think, of the last century. And uh, he was an introvert, rather troubled household, uh, and uh, he rarely left the house. And, and then he comes out, he gets into acting, well, comedy first, and then he gets into acting, and what a successful human being. Uh, great guy, he made lives better for all of us. And I was a big fan of him, of his. And, and he did that because of acting and because of performance art. And boy, if we can teach kids to act, it, it, there's nothing but good going to come out of that. Yeah, we teach them to act, we teach them to perform, we teach them to um, express themselves in many different forms in different ways, we teach them to dance. You know, one thing though, let me say this, is that some things just come natural. Dancing and singing are two of those things. But one thing that doesn't come natural is learning to read. And reading, you actually, there's a science behind it, and I'm really proud that the Anchorage School District took advantage of the Alaska Reads Act, and we now have um, uh, part of our foundation formula, we increased the base student allocation for pre-K. 
When we look at uh, how do we get more involvement in arts and get people behind arts, we start earlier. And so you, you learn to read, so then you can read to learn. And you can learn about so much more things once, once uh, um, you have that ability. But uh, as far as the arts are concerned and, and bringing that education down at an earlier level, um, that's, that's how students and that's how children get creative. And as the mayor pointed out earlier, oftentimes we rely on the passion of, of teachers wanting to teach more than we're willing to compensate them for. Um, and I think that that's wrong. I mean, we really do need to invest in education and arts has got to play a key role in that because that's how we shape society is through our art. Jason, could you repeat the core question again for me, please? Sure. I'm sorry, I've been in so many debates, I think I've transitioned <laughs> into a different one. It's fine. Uh, you know, in the, in the face of studies that show the arts and culture have tremendous impact on social issues, community health, well-being, uh, arts and culture groups still struggle to have a voice and prove their importance in a healthy, thriving community. Please share how you would value art and how you will commit to amplifying and resourcing our arts and culture in Anchorage. Thank you, Jason. I've been valuing art since the first day I was uh, hired to run Anchorage Economic Development Corporation. Uh, when I was invited within a matter of days of joining, in, joining that organization, to come and speak at a major event talking about the value of the arts uh, to the community from an economic development point of view. And then through the Live Work Play initiative that we launched in 2010 when we started to see the forward-looking storm clouds that were on the horizon for the challenges that we're facing today on demographics and losing workforce, we really worked hard to try and bring an alliance together of the arts. And I will admit, we didn't succeed in that but I will take great heart in the fact that the disaster that was COVID has resulted in a really great thing, which is the alliance that has brought us here tonight. And I think that I will stand as a ready partner with that alliance and plus any other arts or culture organization, group, entity, or just three people together who want to pull off a project. And I will do my best to be a strong cheerleader and a connector for them for resources to help them to be successful because every time the mayor can help arts expand and grow in our community, we are that much better for it. All right, well, we've arrived at the time for closing comments. So this is your last chance to get your theme song played by Pierre, uh, if you want to go over that in 60 seconds. But uh, yes, you have one minute for closing remarks and we will begin with Mayor Bronson. Well, not much is that I've said needs to be said again. So uh, our city's at a crossroads. We're, we're, we're looking at a choice between balanced government and, uh, and one party rule in this city. Uh, quite frankly, the assembly, there's about nine folks on the assembly that, that agree with at least one of my opponents almost completely. And some people complain about this notion that we can't get along in government. That's not always a bad thing. Because if everyone agrees with everyone else, especially in two branches of the three branches of government, um, it's one party rule. That never ends well for anyone. I think I am that balance uh, uh, against a, a great voice, a singular voice on the assembly. I think we need that voice because as we look at what's happened in many cities across, especially on the West Coast, is this notion that we look at Seattle and Tacoma when this happens, nothing goes well. Thank you. My mom uh, raised two boys on her, on her own. I was uh, five years old and three years old when she left a note saying, pick up the car at the airport, and we left a very violent alcoholic man. We came back, came back up to Alaska in 1972. And I gotta tell you, man, I, if it wasn't for arts in my life, I can't imagine who I would turn out. It really has shaped me. And that's the reason why I see why, it's, why arts are so important in shaping society. And um, um, as we said earlier, it starts when we're younger. But there's two things I really appreciate about uh, Anchorage, and that is its people and our potential. And I really do believe in the unlimited power of people working together. Because together we are smarter, together we are stronger, and together we can make Anchorage a place that we can all be proud of. In that spirit of togetherness, arts does that for us. 
You know, we share in all the richnesses of people's talents and creativity when we come together around the arts. So I'm nonpartisan. I haven't been a member of a political party for over 20 years, so we can set aside that fear for the mayor because I'm not partisan. <laughs> However, I am all about Anchorage. That's my party. And that's what I want to accomplish, is working together with members of the community, members of the assembly, where we can find agreement and seek solutions that we can all work on together to advance our city, to turn around this downward trend that we seem to be facing, to think long term in terms of where are we going to be in 10 years? How about that, just that 10 year window? What are we going to be in 10 years? What do we want our city to be? And what are we going to do to accomplish that? And how are we going to measure progress? And how are we all going to know how we're doing almost on a daily basis in getting towards that big vision? When we start to do that, that's when we start to succeed. Instead of going from one dumpster fire to another and just being stuck in the now, let's start thinking about the future. We can fix the problems at the same time that we have now, but we need to start laying out a path for where we want to be in 10 years, and that's what I will bring to the office of mayor. Come on, play it louder, play it louder. <laughs> One aspect that I love about art is how it brings perspectives to us and how that's, you know, what we are as a community is a community of different perspectives. It isn't about parties at the local level. It's about working together and solving problems and connecting so that we can make our community a better place. And that's why I'm running for mayor, to get the basics right, to ensure that our streets and trails are safe for everyone, and to make our community a better place to live, to work, to raise a family, to grow a business, start a business, to retire. I believe in our future, I believe in our potential, and I'm excited about working with all of you to move our community forward. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I look forward to talking with you afterwards. I really want to earn your vote. And um, I hope that we have some more time to talk. Thank you. Well, candidates, thank you so very much. I have uh, I've been in arts administration for I hate to say almost 19 years, uh, but this is the first time, and this is this is quite something. The first time I've seen elected officials talk about arts and culture for an hour and a half. So thank you so much for for that privilege. I thought somebody was giving a standing O, but it was, it was just the cameraman back there. <laughs> yeah. uh, to kind of close this... Yeah. <laughs> not, every, not every show gets a standing ovation. Um, uh, I want to really thank the team here at Cyrano's for making this work out tonight. Uh, this has been great. Uh, they've been just tremendous hosts for the forum, so let's, uh, let's give Cyrano's a big round of applause. I also really want to thank the committee. It's hard to believe that um, four weeks ago, this was just an idea. Um, and here we are tonight. When you decide you want to put on a show, you can do it. So uh, good job, uh, Arts Alliance Advocacy Committee, for making this all work tonight. Uh, and lastly, I want to say thank you to you uh, for tonight's forum. In the arts, what we do matters more when we gather together to share in the experience. And tonight, you got to hear directly from the candidates about a wide range of issues that you care about. And we hope that you're now better informed and will share what you heard tonight with others. That's the word of mouth part, right? Oh, that show was so great. You got to go to it. You need to go out and tell people what you hear tonight from these candidates. But there's even one more thing that you can do, one more very important thing you can do, the most important thing, and that is to get out there and vote. <laughs> now I got a standing ovation. Yes. All right. Well, that concludes our Anchorage Arts Alliance. Oh. Round of applause. Oh, for Pierre! Thank you, Mayor Bronson. <laughs> oh, I know, you can't forget the band, yes. Yeah, thank you, Pierre. Uh, so that concludes our first uh, Anchorage Arts Alliance Mayoral Candidates Forum, and we hope you all have a great night. And the candidates are available for more questions, so. Thank you.